All righty then. It is March 25th, and we are back for another edition of our Monday Night Online Open Mic. I'll be your host and MC tonight, Richie David Marufo, and I'm coming to you live and alive from the 915. Uh, we're happy to be here. Um, thanks for tuning in with us. And uh, yeah, if you're waiting for us to start, uh, once again, thank you. You're a real one. Uh, we appreciate doing these Monday night shows. And we've been doing them all the way back since April of 2020. Every single Monday, over 200 episodes. And tonight, you guys get to be part of that tradition. Whether you're returning or if you're here for the first time, um, we are based out of El Paso, Texas. Barbed Wire Open Mic Series, in addition to our online shows, we do have a bunch of shows in the El Paso and Las Cruces areas. In fact, this week, you can catch us downtown Tuesday at Rosewood for our Verse and Harmony Open Mic that is open for writers and musicians. And Thursday, we're going to be at Old Sheep Dog Brewery. I'm wearing the cap, a little promo for my friends there and down in South Central El Paso. Uh, go grab a beer and hang out with us. More importantly, we're looking forward to seeing our friend Oso Lobo, Bear Wolf, propaganda poet, man of many names. Uh, he'll be coming to El Paso once again to visit, and we'll be performing at these venues. So come and hang out with us. Other than that, we're happy to be here. Um, and uh, this is like any other open mic, except it is online. So if you want to perform, all you have to do is sign up. There is a link in the description of the video so you can click on the description it's pretty much right at the top of the page so we still have a little bit of room we have a pretty fine list though so um the other thing is as each po poet or performer goes on definitely encourage you guys to follow them online i'm going to ask people to share that info uh, and also where you can catch them upcoming uh featured performances writing workshops publications all that good stuff we want to celebrate what you guys are doing all right so Without further ado, we're going to kick things off in El Paso. That's right. We're going to go uh, a little bit of west of where I am and visit our good friend Robin Schofield, who it's always great to kick these things off. So, Robin, when you are ready, go ahead and take the stage. Hey, Richie. Hey, everybody. Happy Monday. <clears throat> I'm going to read uh, three of my own uh, from my uh, recovered manuscript. Songs of Narciso. And this one is called Bars of Birds. Hold on to the evening's chapter. Heron's fugue, Kingfisher's tonic. The other realm we cannot escape. Like the baby sparrow in the compost who expired after three days of dodging domestic cats and death by claw. Attracted to decay, it knew the minute it fell out of the nest without fledging, life was over. We made eye contact, but there are lots of quarrelsome sparrows. The slash of a wing at twilight cuts through me, sharp as pain from a stomach ulcer. The ants have eaten the flesh off his small, pointed head under the hum of a B-flat moon. What is the word for it? The shape of a flute that needs tuning and cannot be uttered until it is changed utterly. And this one is a, uh, a prose poem, I think, and it's called Bridge of the Americas, which is an actual bridge in El Paso, a border bridge. Cantalily wants to cross the Rio Bravo, but she'll have to wait. Ramiro, the homeless vet, shoots her with his hand as if it were a toy gun. Backed up in traffic, Cantalily wishes it were easier to go to Ciudad Juarez at night. The people need rebirth out of the mouths of alligators. The fiberglass ones by Luis Jimenez that writhe in the plaza of El Paso, Texas, not the real ones there decades ago. Cantalily spies the statue of Lincoln on the Mexican side. Mother Teresa wears a skirt of spiders. Jicama and avocado cannot be imported, nor the juicy Mexican tangerine, El Mandarino. Someone on the bridge bangs on a tambourine. Someone else juggles. They all battle the carbon monoxide from creeping cars and trucks 
as a kid sells La Loteria and Chicle and foam maps of Mexico, a map without river or bridge, the detachable states of Los Estados Unidos de Mexico. There's a fence across the frontera now, but how many women have disappeared? Cantalili keeps repeating herself and she wants to know why. It's a chant for rain. She eats her mandarino before La Aduana spots her and she spits out the one seed on the no man's land of the bridge. Cantalili thinks, I should have walked across the Santa Fe Street Bridge. She thinks her papers are not in order. How to tell U.S. Customs that she is a nursling of the sky. And I rem remind you that uh, Cantalili and Narciso are brother and sister, both kind of tricksters. And so this is Narciso again, contemplating nighttime prey. There was a hailstorm, my head full of granite. What a relief to tear the thigh off the rabbit. I had to kick to get free the oily tongue of the night, spoken in gasoline dialects, feeble teachers I despised. There was a month of rain. My eyes felt like boulders were behind each one, tramping like soldiers. The river started flowing, my heart like a wave in the black ocean, a man you cannot save. And for Women's History Month, I've been reading out of my, my friend Jennifer Clement's book. Uh, it's called Newton Sailor. And she does a lot of um, work with women who have kind of been lost to history. So uh, one of those women would be Elsa Einstein. And this is called Elsa Explains Time to Albert. I went to the butcher shop. And I must have brushed up against something. There is blood on my skirt. At first I thought, I've cut myself. I've cut myself many times. Calf blood or rabbit blood? I don't know. When did it live? Is it still alive? Where is it learning to sleep? I must put my skirt in cold water. I know it will always have blood on it even if I turn off the light. And I want to read one more about one of my favorite lost women, Carolyn Herschel, the sister of William Herschel, the great astronomer. So this is called William Herschel's Sister Carolyn Discovers Eight Comets. In the Fahrenheit of my pulse, I feel their dust. I hear them rustle in my fringed sleeves, shaped like F clefts, ribs stitched. I have found the new lights. On cloud white evenings, I draw fish hooks, draw the eye, shank, gap, throat, bend, barb, point, and polish the telescope. Rest my eyes. Wait. Whatever the sky gives me, I will take. Jennifer Clement. And um, I have a new book out. Let's see, where is it? It's called Ridge of High Pressure, and you can find it at uh, Mouthville Books or at Bookshop, or you can hit me up uh, at my email, or I'm on Facebook under my name, and I'm on Instagram now under my uh, email moniker. So, um, hey, Michael's got it. Yay. Cool. And I'm doing a Tumble Words workshop in April. <clears throat> it's going to be called Let Us Metaphor. And um, that's going to be fun. I think that's on the 27th. It's on the last Saturday in April, I think. And that's one to three mountain standard mountain daylight time <clears throat> on Saturdays. 
Time Awards is always good, no matter who the presenter is. And um, hit Kit Ren up for the link to Tumble Works. So thank you all. Awesome. Thank you, Robin. Shout out, shout out, Robin. Shout out, Tumble Words. Shout out, Kit. Um, that was such a great set. It propelled me up into space. Now I'm, now I'm feeling a little spacey. But it's been a while since I've brought out the graphics for one of these shows. Uh, so I thought I'd bring it back. We got the logo. We got my Instagram. So for those of you watching on YouTube, you can follow me here on Instagram at The Wall Reveries. You can also message me about the Tejano Passport stuff. So if you are an EPCC student right now looking for the Tejano Passport QR code, I can provide it to you. All I ask is that you stick around for as long as you can. This is an online show, a virtual show. So like we can't really like have you stick around, you know, but try and stick around for as long as you can. We have a really great lineup of poets and writers and performers. Um, I'm going to, you know, stick around and then shoot me an email or message me here. Um, you can also find me in the email directory at, at uh, EPCC. I teach English there. You can look up my last name, Marufo, any of those ways. Uh, and just let me know, who did you enjoy? Uh, which poets did you like? Uh, is, are there any poems that like you were able to connect with in some way or that stood out to you? Or was there like a particular line that you just loved? Any of those things, send me like two or three things that stood out to you. Um, and then I'll reply back with the code. Um, so that shouldn't be too bad. Um, uh, we're going to go ahead and continue uh, more on Tumble Words and Kit later, but right now we're going to go ahead and go up north, at least for us in El Paso, and we're going to visit our friend in Denver. That's right. It's time to tune in with Mike Sindler. Happy Monday, Mike. Welcome to the mic. Hey, happy Monday. Happy every day. Um, always good to be here. Always nice to follow Robin. I don't mind being right behind great poetry. It's not competition here. Um, and I really uh, don't mind being behind her friend, which is like such a nice thing of, here's a woman poet who we're not familiar enough with telling us about other women that we should be more familiar with. Just to such a nice resonance for uh, Women's Month. Um, and I am going to put up my usual thing for lighthouseriders.org because I always do, because I always believe in it, and it is a wonderful thing. And I will say again right now, if you you might want to think about uh, looking at your calendar, what you're doing at the beginning of June, because Lit Fest is coming up, and it is going to be spectacular. Um, I'm going to... Oh, wait, somehow you accidentally muted yourself, Mike. That's weird. Okay, all's well. Uh, I'm going to immediately put the fact I have a feature coming up tomorrow um, at 1 o'clock our time, so 3 o'clock Eastern and um, noon Pacific. Uh, it's actually out of England. Um but uh, it's called Fly to the Dragonflies, and uh, I would love if, if anybody wants to go ahead and register for that and show up. I think it's going to be very nice. Uh, there's going to be another um, feature in addition to myself who will be very good. Um, I don't have his name in front of me, though. Um, so in looking for stuff to do for that feature, you know, I was looking through all my stuff and these are some pieces I like that I decided uh, I wouldn't do. So I'll read them here instead. And uh, some of y'all have heard them before, but that's okay. Like Robin says, it just doesn't matter. So, or Kit says, Kit's famous for saying it. Um, first one's surpass. I miss my cat almost as much as I miss you but that would be impossible to surpass. I miss the sun almost as much as I miss you when night is long and cold and I can't sleep. I miss feeling at home almost as much as I miss you, but that would be impossible. You were my home. I miss my heart almost as much as I miss you. It's been hard to find without your light. 
I miss being loved almost as much as I miss you, but that would be impossible to surpass. And the next one is called Tides. The moon is a puffed face, craggy surface pocked with gray acne scars. It frowns at the earth, not knowing its own beauty, not knowing lovers see only its shining silver surface, pushed by its gravity into embraces, faces flushed pink, suspended in close orbit around synchronous hearts. The moon looks down, jealous of lovers, longing to kiss the earth, showing its better half, shrouding the other. Holding back, it pulls with its want, tides of planetary desire. And the last one is for my little kitty cat. Um, or is it? Uh, no, it's not. It's this one. Um, very different. It's called Hot Yoga Babe. I picked you up at the airport holding up a sign that read, Hot Yoga Babe. You had sent me handmade tickets to be cashed in for various erotic favors. We used the whole booklet. But outside the apartment, away from the bed, boredom sat between us everywhere we went like a third wheel. Nothing but carnal invoked interest. By the end of the week, we were both more than ready to part ways. I drove you back to DIA. You told me you had inexplicably never done it in a car. We checked it off the list in the parking lot. My parting gift, I suppose. It could have ended much worse. Last lust dissolved in farewell kiss. Your smile when you read, Hot Yoga Babe. That's how I'll always remember you. I never saw you again. And that's okay. And I'm going to put on the cat hat. And um, yeah, I am going to do a couple women poets. And uh, these are, as far as it goes, fairly well-known ones. And they should be because they're great. Uh, the first is Adrian Rich. And it's called Tonight No Poetry Will Serve. Saw you walking barefoot, taking a long look at the new moon's eyelid. Later spread, sleep fallen, naked in your dark hair, asleep but not oblivious of the unslept, unsleeping elsewhere. Tonight, I think, no poetry will serve. Syntax of, of rendition, verbal pilots the plane, adverb modifies action, verb force feeds noun, submerges the subject, noun is choking, verb disgraced goes on doing. Now diagram the sentence. And the second is by the great Audre Lord, and it's called A Song for Many Movements. Nobody wants to die on the way, caught between ghosts of whiteness and the real water. None of us wanted to leave our bones on the way to salvation, three planets to the left, a century of light years ago. Our spices are separate in particular, but our skin sing in complementary keys. At a quarter to eight meantime, we were telling the same stories over and over and over. Broken down gods survive in the crevices and mud pots of every beleaguered city, where it's obvious there are too many bodies to cart to the ovens or gallows, and our users have become more important than our silence. After the fall, too many empty cases of blood to bury or burn, and there will be no body left to listen, and our labor has become more important than our silence. Our labor has become more important 
than our silence. And I apologize to those poets for getting a few words wrong in there, but uh, I tried. Okay, thank you all very much. Right on. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, I love Audrey Lord. I mean, you always come through with some awesome poets. And uh, I always tell my students, check out some of the writers that that are read here as some of your uh, as, as some of the cover poems. All right. So we're going to go ahead and continue on from Denver and uh, head a little, a little northeast in the country. We're going to stop in in East Harlem, New York, where it's someone we haven't seen in a good while. Uh, it's always really good to have them here. Let's go ahead and welcome back Vex Lex. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's it's up? good to be back. I know it's been it's been a minute, but glad to be back. Um, so I have three pieces tonight. Um, first piece I'm gonna read from my book, Ask Me Again in Six Months. Um, yep, yeah, so I'm gonna just gonna go right into it. It's called Tears. Who decided that crying was a sign of weakness? That once our eyes begin to water, we cannot allow ourselves to surrender to the tears, letting the stream trickle down our cheeks because we may just drown in the emotions we so desperately seek to avoid, seek to deny altogether. But what is crying if not hope persevering? that glimmer of light needed when we encase ourselves in darkness? What is crying if not relinquishing control and freeing ourselves? Crying is a superpower. When babies enter this world, their cries are a sign of life, a sign that a heart beats within. Who decided that only stars were allowed to collapse? A scientific phenomenon, you are also a solar system. It is already difficult to arm oneself to defend against external battles when our weapons have depleted from internal warfare. Must we be both a casualty and an enemy? Contrary to popular belief, humans are meant to feel. It is your right. How do we expect to grow if we do not nourish our souls? If you find yourself crying over something so minute, so insignificant, Consider that maybe your body has been parched for quite some time and the thirst needed to be quenched. Maybe it isn't a breakdown after all, but the pieces falling into place. So that was tears. Um, my next piece, um, I wrote it fairly recently. It's called Fruitless. And it ties into, you know, Women's History Month. So it's called Fruitless. This womb will not bear offspring. That sort of thing does not appeal to me. The desire to not be a mother has never felt more real to me. Does it make me less of a woman if I openly choose to keep my uterus for myself? Is it okay for me to say that I do not want it to be a welcoming home? or a visitor center. I do not wish to have this space be infiltrated. That does not mean that I look down upon women who jump at the chance to multiply themselves. I applaud and salute them. I rebuke the people who believe we should be enemies as if we are on opposing sides. Women should be allowed to live in their truth without having to spar with one another, without me having to feel like the grotesque other do not try to smother me with your ignorance. You might remain ruthless in your attempts to rip me rootless, but just remember my tree intends to flourish e even if it may be fruitless. And my last piece is called Chopping Block. My mother says I'm a glutton for punishment. I say I'm a martyr for masochism. I barter with magnetism, pulling me closer to the flames. I pretend it doesn't burn. When will I learn? I should never let myself be called anything other than my name. Life has shown me no mercy, so in return, I follow suit. Why am I like this? I must get to the root. 
a nuisance for nourishment. I wonder if self-deprecation will always taste as good. I could just walk away, but where's the fun if you don't have the last say? Pain is a great motivator, disgust an excellent stimulator. I obsess because I can. There are things about myself I do not understand. Look to others to fuel the hurt, starved for vengeance, but somehow I end up eating dirt. Wondering what I could have done to deserve this, I have lost my nerve. I am powerless to the past, the act of having my emotions on full display for the whole world to judge. It wouldn't be me if I didn't hold a grudge. If it were up to me, I'd try to find another way, another medium for my pain. Because when it is you on the chopping block, what is there to gain? So those are my pieces. Again, I have a book out. It's called Ask Me Again in Six Months. You can DM me on Instagram, Vex Lex Poetry. Uh, that's V-E-X-E-D, Lex Poetry. Thank you. And it's good to be back. Awesome. Yes. Thank you so much. Congratulations on the book. Let me go ahead and switch out with you here. Uh, check it out. Follow Vex Lex on Instagram. Uh, if you want, you can link it up and I'll, I'll share it with our YouTube peeps as well um i see a lot of people now uh jumping into the youtube live stream good to have you here welcome welcome this is our monday night online open mic uh i said at the beginning of the show we've been doing this since april of 2020 so that's every single monday we haven't missed one yet so hopefully we can keep that going um welcome to today's show um again if you're an epcc student and you're here for the Tejano Passport QR code. I did write in the live chat. You can go you scroll up and, and see if it's there, directions. And then you can also contact me through my Instagram page right there uh, with asking for the QR code. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and continue. Uh, thank you, Vex Lex. Harlem in the house. East Harlem in the house. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and go from coast to coast because now we're going to go to the West Coast and drop in uh, with our friend Finn Bell, who... Wanted to let me know that she had a bolio with cheese for breakfast the other day. Um, she doesn't know what she's having today, which I guess would have been this morning. Uh, maybe she can fill us in. Otherwise, she's got some poetry or a story, maybe a little bit of both. Let's go and welcome the sensational, the wonderful, the universal Finn Bell. What is up? Hey, happy Monday. Happy Monday. Hey, hey, the cheese. Hey, hey, folks. Uh, good to be back. Two, two weeks in a row, I'm trying to have an um, unbreakable streak. Unbroken streak here. So, yeah. So, um, four poems, hopefully within a reasonable time limit. Um, one of them is a cover at the end. So, none of them new. Unfortunately, haven't been writing anything recently, but um, here it goes. First poem. Sit here now. Hear this story the day I reincarnated. Mortal flesh, molten thin and sugar glass bone, landing starship upon a Monday evening's dying planet. Sonar wave Rhea, awaken Titan, see my plumed, prideful fishtail, ruin my smeared, gash lip. Vermilion, brilliant, breaking a winning streak. It was in that instance you bellowed, stunned, smitten, I paused. There was nothing laced in the impending icebergs melting in my drink. Here I birthed a practice of copying down misshapen excuses sent in my direction on wake of frenzied moving water. Poseidon's bow, slipshod, cocksure proclamation you asserted, unbending even then. Brine and tang, I murmured back. Who between the two of us was bothering to keep count to number days in correct order, when I was already tracing the maddening shape of your lips to round out its vowels to soften the frantic release in my direction. You consciously dimmed your flame, this flame inside your hurricane lantern chest. You cupped long fingers to surround it, to guard it, to keep me from deciphering it. While your essence, your combustible you, hiss between our untended gaps your fire not wanting to churn vaporous, deplete my approaching whirlpools, my water not wanting to douse you, so wanting to swallow you whole, not wanting to want you.
not wanting to douse you, so wanting to swallow you whole, not wanting to want you, wanting you. I felt the newness of how my bare skin screamed beneath siren scale, rapturous, holy fire where you singed it that very first time. I remember us awakening the fall in November. I remember us quickening rebirth in December. I remember us come July, season to the season's changes and impatient to cast out pretense of distance and cold. How the hot wind chafed of your touch, testing your come-ons, pressed down unyielding gusts on my throat and cheeks, summer fling, sweltering, blistered. Freak occurrence, dog, gay squalls, you never hung around too long, your destination then far abroad, scattered and untold. I had known in Mintaka, spirit ascending, I would gift you my devotion, I would rainfall you my patience, coax poppies forth from the cracks of you, desiccated earth of you, nexus birth soul. It was in this place we created comprehension dawning, we witnessed the way we halted the tumbleweeds rolling in their southwest wandering. We rooted in oasis, became wildflowers of every riotous color, burgeoning life into the desert. In those days, I sang the sea, sleepy, sex skidded drunk for you, as she pulled the moon's phases erratic to echo you, to greet you, sunrise, Elias Mountain, to hold you, to save you, sunset, Icarus plummeting. The leaves turned to gold-hued rot, proserpina, an ambulant, Ascends through the snowdrift, a mayflower head erupts. Soaring is a motion reversed, achieved upside down, the ground is the sky. You bore not a solitary care as your violent rays ripped the sky bare to embrace you, to rescue you in your nightly downfall. Okay. So the next piece is called... The Sunday morning guzzle, which is not a guzzle. Okay. Two perfect opposing halves will not match each other's shape. They will have edges that interlock and create something whole. Night caresses day with starlit fingers. He awakens. Day leads night to her bed and sings in her ear. She is content and whole. Heaven reaches through the lacing of silver clouds and grasps earth hand, earth's hand. The tree braces them and knows that it is together, that they are whole. Night caresses day. With starlit fingers, he turns away. Day leaves night in her bed. Silence rasps her ear. She will stay whole. Heaven reaches through the lacing of silver clouds and lets earth drop. The tree's branches are brittle and lose hold, left to themselves, not whole. Two imperfect melding halves mistake each other's curved shape. They will have points that repel and, re and realize what cannot be whole. Okay, next piece is called Expiry. I am the miracle placed in the ancient fissured mason jar. I am put back on the shelf for later use, the just in case moments. I am malleability when I want to be, but become something even more than that, softer for others. I escape my confines and spill into you. Don't sop me up with an old dish rag. Don't put me back, please, to entomb in the comforting dust. Don't leave me to the road of repetition and endless daydreams. Don't lay me in the pots evenly, a show of seemingly reverential motion because you have lost the sensation and memory of what to do. Do you believe the wiles of recipes when they tell you what is bitter and what is better whole? Do these concoctions break the mold, rise their own yeast and tickle your nose where you pause, pretend, and then bury your whole face to take that long whiff intoxicated? I am plagued inside my fat-laced heart that I am a displacement, a thing for other tables, other palates that seek and question. I know my place. I don't know my place. I don't know this way of being resolved, but not the flavor. It is pride that will effervesce, but also truth. I am taunted by the stars who sit outside of the kitchen window at night, teasing me the notion that they are close enough to touch. 
<clears throat> I know that they lie to me for kindness. I stir on my place upon the counter and spoil my own lingering sweetness. I am damned by this desire to not be here, to not be of this place. The dreams take hold again, and I am a creature of flight with my own light to bear. I want to join each twinkling new sun already carefully planning its own death rites. I know I shouldn't dream beyond myself, but I want to laugh with them and break bread. And finally, the cover poem, which um, I know we're all familiar with and most of us love, I do. It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden lived whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. And this maiden, she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. I was a child and she was a child in this kingdom by the sea, but we loved with a love that was more than love. I and my Annabelle Lee, with a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that long ago in this kingdom by the sea, a wind blew out of a cloud by night, chilling my Annabelle Lee, so that their high-born kinsmen came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulcher in this kingdom by the sea. The angels not half so happy in heaven went envying her and me. Yes, that was the reason, as all men know, in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud, chilling and killing my Annabelle Lee. But our love, it was stronger by far than the love of those who are older than we, of many far wiser than we. And neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And the stars never rise that I see the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And so, all the night tide, I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride, in her sepulcher there by the sea, in her tomb by the side of the sea. Yes, awesome. Thank you. And really quick before we move on, uh, any ongoings in the extended vocabulary verse? How can people keep up with that? Um, they can go to my link tree, link, link tree forward slash Finn Bell um, or Instagram, Finn underscore Bell. And uh, tomorrow is my monthly karaoke night. Uh, the theme is it's a no brainer. <laughs> so, uh, but you can bring anything you want, either hang out, play trivia, um, sing along with everybody. On Thursday is my uh, bi-monthly online open mic, uh, 7 p.m. Pacific. And the theme is feline arcane. So whether you love cats, you don't love cats. Who doesn't love cats? I love cats. Um, please come by and uh, bring some theme poetry. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Thank you so much. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Finn Bell, everyone. Um, I asked a question for all, all our peeps on YouTube here hanging out with us in the live chat. How many Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe fans are there? Let us let us know in the chat. It's always good. Uh Shout out to uh, Eddie Groove Acosta. He teaches English here in, in El Paso. He's such a huge supporter of literary arts. I know he, he's a big fan of Poe and and just kind of sharing the love of literature with his students. That's such a gift. So, um, all right. Uh, shout out to Sandy. Good to have you here. Tessa. I was going to say Christopher. <laughs> Christopher, good to have you. Yeah. Um, Christian. Uh, Jay. Welcome, welcome to the show. Let us, yeah, hang out with us in the chat. You know, chat it up. If there's any lines you love, 
definitely uh, repeat them in here uh, in, the, in the chat with us. But we're going to go ahead and keep going. Our next performer was recently banned. I didn't let him into the. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. It's an inside joke because his technology wasn't working. Uh, but today it finally works. I'm, so I'm happy about it. Uh, we were able to turn on, turn on his video and mic. So without further ado, we're going to go to South Euclid, Ohio, like that on Zoom, to so, uh, the Poet Laureate of South Euclid. We have Doc Janning. Doc, take it away when you're ready. Thank you. This uh, first poem is from my book, Before Today, Hyphen Beyond Tomorrow, which is available through your local bookstores, etc., and uh, the title of this piece is Nexus. In the space between, between, before today and beyond tomorrow, there is a moment, a moment of now, a now of limitless possibilities, where lies a node, a nexus amid distant drums of time, in a vortex of intricate language, the colors of music and a kaleidoscope of thought. It holds an anthology, an anthology of life, life in armor, life in silk, life in all the intricacies, impossibilities, and impo improbabilities of the far side of never, life which seeks that which seeks life in the voices of distant longing and the caress of infinity. This is Ruach. Ruach is a Hebrew word meaning wind and ghosts and a few other things. In the inscape of me lies the breath of wind the infinite, intimate, and myself. It is all I have been, all I have experienced, all I have lost, and what I have found. It is the brokenness of me, the unmoored jamais vu, sodade, hirife, and of feeling unholy. It is the wabi-sabi of me, the kintsukuroi of my imperfections and of existing through writing. And I am but a moment, a moment seeking surcease of pain, an end to loneliness, peace. A moment seeking what could have been among hopes and dreams and ghosts of what has been a moment of destination, moving through mists of being, silences of forever, shadows of existence and chthonian pain. I encounter echoes and reflections of dreams. I am an I am on a journey, a journey of hope, a journey to a destination, a destination always, always just out of reach, a destination sought in the depths of yearning, of saudade, of her right. A destination sought in the abyss of eons and ages. A destination which sings and calls to me from the somewhere and somewhere. Excuse me. From the somewhere and somewhen of infinity and the multiverse. A destination of love and peace. A destination of quitch a destination of completion, of wholeness, a destination of becoming, of one. And I finish with Hundun. 
Though we travel different paths, it does not mean we are separate. For I feel the connection of our souls, and I've unforgotten dreams of you. Dreams which lie deep within me, in a dreamscape, in an inscape, where they grow and bud until the day their blossoms explode. I am aware of the cost to me, of their internal growth, of their longing and pain, their sadade and heraith. And my memories, memories within those dreams, push me to decide, to decide which ones I will feed, which ones I will allow to grow. For I see your face in all I do. I sense your presence, feel your love, and I am never alone, never without dreams. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Doc. Um, appreciate that. Um, how can people follow and support you online? Well, uh, you can find me uh, on Facebook as Doc Janning, and uh, I have my own Zoom event, Second Sunday Poets, coming up on April the. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm drawing a blank. I think it's the fourteenth. I'll put the the information in the chat. And then I have my book set uh, before today, beyond tomorrow. I'll put that information in the chat as well. Very cool. We'll go ahead and uh, and share that with everyone, especially all our peeps on YouTube. Once again, if you're just tuning in, this is our Monday night online open mic. We're here every Monday. So if you would like to share your own work, we definitely encourage you to come by and sign up. So maybe you're just checking it out this week, but maybe you join us the following. Uh, we will be here. The best way to keep up with that is to follow us on social media, the Barbed Wire Open Mic Series. We have uh, a lot of stuff going on always, not just online, but in the El Paso and Las Cruces area. Um, I believe there's even a spoken word night in Las Cruces this Thursday. So yes, every now and then we're also going to have competing events. Uh, spoken word night um, in Las Cruces. It's going to be, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you can follow Las Cruces BWAMs. Um, we're all Paso B Wams, Las Cruces. So, Joe, you can hit it up if you're interested. Uh, have you been to those yet? No? Okay. Uh, I'll send you the info when I have a chance. Um, okay. So, uh, we got a lot of stuff going on. We got a lot of moving parts. Um, shout out to Christian. Good to have you here. Cool. He really loved your poem, Doc. Uh, yeah, he loved your set. Uh, that's really cool. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and continue on. We have another performer that we have not seen in a while. In fact, in our in our grand history uh, he's only been here twice, so uh, we always love a returning performer. Uh, joining us from Delaware, we have uh, Mr. – hold on, I have to get the, the name right on here as you uh, – Doodleman, Doodleman. Uh, so without further ado, welcome Robert Doodleman. <laughs> Good to have you here. And the share screen is enabled. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Robert Fleming. I'm a, a graphic artist and – a visual poet from Lewis, Delaware. And my um my front my front piece is a piece which has been inspiring for me to create new work. It is uh, by Andy Warhol, Silk Screens of Marilyn Monroe. Uh, the reason why I picked to do work in this style is. I liked that the images were impressionistic and that there is a very clear, clear difference between the foreground, which has the picture of Maryland, and the background, which allows, which allows the artist to do uh, a very strong color contrast between the two different parts um, of the image. And I also like that each image allows, would allow me to do five pictures. 
So in addition to uh, Andy taking these four pictures and putting them into one image, he has also created separate images with each one. And I will be sharing my feature uh, of uh, the Earth. Uh, this one is called the Great Earths of Bark. And my color contrasts are the background is brown, which is the opposite of green. Uh, my second one is the Great Earths of Night. And the Great Earths of Stems, where I'm contrasting red and green again and blue. And here is the Great Earths of Water where I'm contrasting orange and blue. And here are the four Earths together. And then my second series of the Earth is a little more uh, psychedelic. Uh, the Here we have lime contrasted with purple. and green and red, where the red is more fiery. Another purplish blue contrasted with gray. And another gray with more of a psychedelic uh, blue. And here are the four of the Earth's uh, together. And I did want to share that I will be having uh, a one feature coming up April 11th at the Dyer Literary Series, which is a Zoom meeting uh, hosted out of Boston, where I will be sharing my uh, book, a White War, uh, which is a visual poetry book. And the other places you can see me is, I am uh, one of the editors of the, the press, Old Scratch Press, and the digital magazine, Instant Noodles. So I'll put those links in the chat. And thank you for letting me share some of my work, which is created in the style of Andy Warhol. That was a pretty cool presentation, man. I uh, love it. And uh, as always, people in our YouTube chat were loving it. Thank you, uh, Robert Fleming, a.k.a. Doodleman. Um, all right, I'm looking at the list here. And we're going to actually bounce back to the Bay Area and uh, welcome a debut here. Although my understanding is that she she's a, a regular in other mics. So it's still great that even after all this time, we're getting people making it here to our open mic for the first time. Uh, joining us from the Bay Area, let's welcome Debbie Seagal. Debbie, welcome. Great to have you. Thank you welcome, so welcome. much. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, this one is a cut up. I'll just show I don't have anything other than uh, like, I don't know if that's backwards to you or what. Um, it's a cut up of my own poetry, which was this weird idea I came up with. Um, the last project. Step into a stream of days, novelties and blank pages. The scribbled routines fib. The stream crammed with hubris, bathing in reminders, goals, parties, and shows stuffed with vanity years ago. To craft and flee the fanning pages from blinding dreams and ignorance akin to consciousness. One year I bored myself. I am grandiosity adjacent. I stream under the blazing diaries, tore up date books, back to journals. And this one um, is untitled. 
Be my dark cavalier, my last lover. Other arms jerk away tired. We don't have years. As we lose patience with each other's quirks, wait for me in the darkness you and I share. Our shared obsession with ghosts. Find me in formless time through distance on computer screens where we meet in spaceless spaces of roomless rooms. Comfort me with forgetfulness of the real world where there is sun. Pale from shutting inside these four years, arms open to your shadow. I know your voice, embraced by your intellect. You know me from the inside out. As darkness falls, I step over fissures ruptured between and I will bear the sorrows getting old before you. No promises is true commitment. In dreams, your voice recites dark poetry. I give you a fountain pen for your ink to bleed on the page. And I ask you only but to stay when the tired world goes away. And I have a cover. It's a Marge Piercy in honor of Women's History Month. And I'll read one called The Box. You are with me, but gone. Your skin grows bark. It does not want to be translucent to my touch. I am a problem. You will solve me. I am a demand. You will cancel me. I am a shortage. You will audit me. If I am, gr if I am green, you crave purple. If I am warm, you sweat. If I am round, you bounce off. The tides of my dreams ruffle your sleep. My loud needs slice like helicopters through your air. Sometimes you confuse me with air, with water, with pollen, the medium you live in, with the clock of the heart that runs slowly down with time that files every hill flat. To try cannot mean going backward. The past is stored in our bones. Do you want to walk onward toward that blank wall? Now we walk at the wall very fast, holding hands and trying to act as if we believe in an opening. If we come through the stone, we come through in an unknown place. Thank you. All right, thank you, Debbie. And really quick before we leave, just um, if you have any place where people can, people can follow and support your work online or? Oh, wait, yes, no. <laughs> Well, if you if you have links for sure, let us let us uh, know. We can forward them to people. I didn't I didn't unmute myself, but my words that were trying to come out of my mouth were like, "Thank you." <laughs> I'll put some stuff in the chat. Thank you, appreciate it. Okay, perfect. Okay, cool. I, I wasn't sure. Also, my cat was distracting me, so I was having trouble. You know how cats are so needy. I was getting. All right, hold on. I'm trying. I'm trying to do something. Uh, welcome, Debbie. Thank you for joining us, and, and come back whenever you can. You know we're here on Mondays. Um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and keep going, and uh, it's time to get international. Um, she's been hosting workshops where you get to explore inner and outer worlds. Uh, I wrote some. I had some fun last uh, writing last week that I, I'm, I've been working on. Uh, but here, joining us from Ontario, Canada, let's welcome back to the mic. Cassie, and we'll do a quick mic check as well. What is what up, Cassie? Welcome back. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, how how is it? Is it? Do I sound like a robot? Uh, a little bit. Okay. Um, do you think you could see about pushing me a little bit further, or I can just quickly go in and out? But I, yeah, I we'll we'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Try try it really quick. Um, yeah. You know what? It reminds this one wasn't as bad. But it it did remind me of uh when I don't know if I did this when I was a kid. I'm sure a lot of us did, right? When you talk in front of a fan, and you can hear your voice like warble, and like some a lot of us would be become Darth Vader that way, or, or <laughs> we say it, something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, I love doing the Darth Vader, um, or as we say in this neck of the woods, Darth Vato. Um, 
All right. So while we do that, shout out to everyone here in the chat with us. Um, yes, here's Cassie again. Um, she is hosting generative writing workshops. So if you're interested in that, uh, she'll promote that after her set. Let's go ahead and try this one more time. Go ahead, Cassie. Hello, hello. Okay, go ahead and unmute. Richie, oh. I think you were talking to me or not because I it didn't connect right away. Oh no, you're good. Elsa, you sound nice and you sound loud and clear. Okay, sorry. I didn't know if you were talking to me because I came on and you were silent. Um, so I assumed it had something to do with me. Okay. Yeah. Uh so we're we're good then? Yeah, we're good. Go ahead and take it away. Okay. Um <clears throat> okay. So this first one is called Verdant. <clears throat> Color these days has more muted tones, or at least it looks that way. Green is different now, still found, but rarely in verdant tones that used to blanket the verdant, sorry, in a, oh, man, man, one second, okay, I'm going to backtrack here. <clears throat> Green is different now, still found, but rarely in verdant tones that used to blanket the earth. Here you can perch on a limestone giant, where the trees used to run rampant and free at its feet, and look out at the large expanse of skeletons of ancient giraffes, concrete giraffes, <clears throat> who have long since lost their reaching towards the ether, for their heads now hang, gazing at the ashes of glass and distant dinosaur. The view is a wash of grayish purple, perhaps reminiscent of a cold November day in a concrete jungle before, only with less light drained the vibrancy of a mixed color palette. Closest we get to animate green is found mostly in neon signs that read, fresh out of fresh and spare parts not much to spare. Though green has not yet escaped our vernacular, now referring mostly to rarity or skill, Green is mainly spoken of in tales of painters who still manage to capture the color's essence. Sometimes, around a campfire, you will hear tell of man up in the hills who paints greenery, luscious, expansive forests, so alive, full of promise, with such clear recollects that if you glance long enough, you can almost feel moss at your feet. <clears throat> Okay, um, so I have another one here. Uh, it's called Distorted Rainbow, and I have to make sure that I can find it fast enough. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> okay. When I was seven, sorry, I was seven when I first noticed the, that water could distort the light surrounding anything in the most enticing way. Staring down at the distorted rainbow submerged in stale fountain water at the Rainbow Center factory outlet. The air was abuzz with new spring energy that day that somehow drove people to flock in a frenzy of consumption. And all I could think was how much I wanted to reach out and touch that strange rainbow below, wade into that peculiar space where light bright, and that special mall bland brand of dismal intersect. Um, okay. Uh, and then I have another one here. Uh, it's called Field Notes. Um, okay. I was going to preface it, but I, I won't. I'll just read it. Okay. <clears throat> when I was ten, I cracked open a bright orange VHS case and watched a young girl crouched around every corner of her neighborhood in converse, spying, taking field notes, perched peering down through a massive skylight. She was fascinated by the basic exchanges, the innocuous comings and goings of neighborhood folk. The allure of penning down field notes captured me. The commitment to fascination, the obsession with observation, of keeping track, drew me in again and again and again. The hidden life of the curious observer, the corridor of glimpses into the 
into even the most mundane inner worlds. So enticing. I never carried around a notebook spying as a child. But Harriet's inclinations I seemed to have never put down. They grew in me as I grew into the close study of the mind, into the meticulous observer in converse, the note-taker, the fascinated by the concept of studying the mundane, the romanticizer of peering into windows and stealing glimpses of storylines. I may not carry a notebook everywhere. I never claimed, sorry, I never aimed to be Harriet the Spy when I grew up, but perhaps I grew into a version of her all the same. <sighs> okay. Um... And then I have a cover poem here that I hope I can get up fast enough. I okay, wow, that was faster than thought. <laughs> okay, um, this is called "The Caribou" by Chessie Normale. <clears throat> Originally, the zoo was built to remind us of our separation from nature. There were there was no animal in the cage just earth. This reminds me of Tony's mom's suburban lawn in Madison, Wisconsin, overgrowing with native prairie grass and signs from the city that read, I am not insane. I keep the table in my closet, quiet and empty, so it is like a cage of grass. That is where I write this poem now. It is Labor Day. Last night, the caribou was rammed with laughing people. None of none among us aware of what caribou really is, a caribou really is, how it lives, eats, feels, sleeps, talks, or dies. I drank rainbow cans of beer called Matuckney Cold Snacks with the astronomer I share Blue House with. He uses a radio to map the Milky Way. That's the kind of speechless life a person craves, where there is no cage just ink and distance, spots of light I won't ever understand, and beyond them, the soft hair around a black hole, remembering what it ate for lunch 20,000 years ago. Sometimes, me too, my soft hair catches the smell of what I cook or burn, and I walk around as a record for a while, but I'm on a leash presided over even when I am alone by a voice in presidential moon boots or the silk pants of a ringleader controlled by the fragrant ticket taker who sleeps in the booth in the chamber of my heart. Okay, so that was a really strange poem, Um, but I liked it earlier, and so apparently I decided to read it. Um, I uh, have one other cover poem here. As long as I'm still good on time, I always get paranoid about. Yeah, you're this. good. Okay. Um. Okay. This one is called "The Index" by Rena Priest. Okay, if it loads properly, there we go. <clears throat> In the beginning, there was darkness, then a bunch of other stuff, and lots of people. Some things were said, loosely interpreted. Or maybe things were not communicated clearly. Regardless, there has always been an index. That thing about the meek, how we shall inherit the earth, that that was a promise made in the treaty at the dawn of time, agreed upon in the primordial darkness, and documented in the spiritual record. The nature of the agreement was thus, the world will seemingly be pushed past capacity. The planet will be discovered, sorry, a new planet will be discovered 31 light years away. Space travel will advance rapidly, making the journey feasible. And the ice sheets will melt. Things will get ugly. The only way to leave will be by ticket. Tickets will be priced at exactly the same amount that can be occurred by abandoning basic humanity. The index will show how you came by your fortune. If you murdered, trafficked, or exploited the vulnerable, stole, embezzled, poisoned, cheated, swindled, or otherwise subdued nature to become 
to come by wealth great enough to afford passage to the new earth. If your ancestors did these things and you've done nothing to benefit from their crimes yet, do nothing to atone through their returning inherited wealth to the greater good, you shall be granted passage. It was agreed. The meek shall stay, the powerful shall leave, and it shall start again. The meek shall inherit the earth, and what shall we do with it but set about putting aside our meekness? Okay, um, and that is all I have uh, for poetry uh, tonight. Um, I, as Richie mentioned, um, I'm just wrapping up a four-week generative poetry workshop online uh, surrounding the theme of poetry as an invitation into curiosity. Um, each week has a sub-theme. This coming week's sub-theme is looking at uh, what I refer to as world origins. So this is, we're going to be looking at poems that uh, invite the reader to be curious about origin stories. So of people and of places and uh, kind of the world in general. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, um, you can go to my Instagram, uh, which is Relentless Intrigue. Um, I'll put a link as well in the chat. Um, yeah, thank you, Richie. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, as always, uh, I gotta, I have to add. You know, that's just the coolest name, relentless intrigue for what are the tools of a poet and an artist. You know, um, the workshop's been fun. I've been, I've been taking part. Um, last week we were talking a lot about post-apocalyptic, like space sci-fi poems, and that's a whole lot of fun. Um, in fact. Cassie peer pressured me to read today, so stick around, and I will I will close a night uh, right before Dan, because Dan always goes last, right? But yeah, I'll, I'll read a little. I'll, I'll read some stuff that I, I'm trying to find right now. But uh, thanks for thanks to everyone who's been here tonight. This is our online mic. We're here every Monday. Again, if you do want to read, if you want to share something, uh, this is also open to musicians. So if you play an instrument and sing, if you're a songwriter, please join us. It could be any instrument. Um, we can, um, you know, there's a link to sign up, but if you want to join us next week, be on the lookout, follow us on social media. I do have a list that goes up uh, usually Sunday by Sunday. Um, if I forget, Mike Sindler, make sure to remind me to get it up in time. He's, he's sure to message me quickly with it. Uh, but yeah, all right, we're going to go to continue. So we're going to go from Canada back to El Paso, Chuco Town. And uh, next up, we have Mr. Monday Night. That's right. Kit Ren in La Casa rocking the coolest shirt ever so whenever you're ready man go and take it away oh we pressed the button at the same time hang on <laughs> all right hi there uh how's everyone doing you're looking well yes this is a very cool shirt they a hardcore band from arkansas named terminal nation made this shirt i haven't listened to them but thanks for the shirt i like i did owe you one for that um Okay. Uh, three of mine and then a couple. No title for this one. Concreteness, as it is commonly used in this field, is an abstraction. It makes no distinction between carpet or tile, between yellow or green grass. These details are to be used, says the professor, to create a real feeling in the reader. Whatever that means. This authenticity is the goal. Even though every tool in our toolbox is fictive, the reader, too, is fictive. His crying produces neither sound nor lacrimony. Her laughter stops with her and does not ripple through her neighbors. We imagine them as strangers that we will compel by sheer magnetism to become friends. In the pursuit of these new friends, plans with old friends are rescheduled. As we catalog the verdant fields our love and we walk through, the lawn grows sick and undisciplined and our love disorderly. And so poetry is feared rather than consumed. The passersby salute it like a flag, but do not pay taxes. It is invoked like magic or violence in place of itself. 
as a threat or a vague and vast gesture of praise. And the poet, well, I have no complaints. These people treat me well. But when they discover that I am a man who cannot and would not grant wishes, I fear they will feel lied to. And pretty recent one. I think I wrote this in November. Hasn't been out of the garage lately, but let's take it out of the garage. The advent of democracy and nationalism has been nothing short of disaster for the fantasy realms. Having so many princes and princesses managed to avoid the wave of 1848 by sheer confusion, but ran instead into the problem of elite consolidation. Nobody is sure if this is a civil war or just the regular kind, but it takes a lot less effort, they're finding, to slay their fellow princes than it did dragons. This is not, however, something the princesses have wanted to reward. It's a small community. You're going to step on somebody's toes. You're going to garret somebody's cousin. Rapunzel has given up her titles of state and become an influencer, managing a business empire that began with an abandoned truck full of bumpets. The fantasy realms are experiencing our kitschy nostalgia for the first time and taking to it like East Germans guzzling Mountain Dew with every meal. The first of its kind ever after Parliament promises to balance the new freedoms with a sensible order, but that, too, has had its complications. Like the ambassador they sent to the United Nations. We tell him he cannot be credentialed until he gives us a name, but he laughs and makes us guess one at a time. It's been three weeks. We're up to El Salvador. If anyone mentions either straw or gold to the ambassador from Uruguay, I fear he'll slit their throat. And um, we had a very good Tumble Words on Saturday, and I want to thank Ben Bell for that uh, in public. And I also want to try and not dwell in for it for too long. Um, I had a friend who was terminally ill when I was very young, and it's I keep trying to write a poem about it because that's what you do with all the bad things that happen to you, right? But I'm, I never end up with what I'm happy in. Well, this is the latest attempt, and let's see. From my vantage point in a secure future, I can say chastisingly that it wasn't a surprise. That no news is obviously not good news in these cases. But I saw the bumblebee visit the rose and said, surely it is not happening now. I have heard that third degree burns do not hurt since they sever your nerves. Someone with the right temperament could stare at their own engulfed arm and say, hmm, isn't that interesting? So when the news came via the cheerful chirp of AOL instant messenger, the whole time I cried and fell and cried and staggered and cried, there was some sort of inner art critic making judgments, calling me too reserved, some kind of emotional sommelier sticking his finger in the bottle and saying, no, not good enough, a little foxy. When his sister called and asked how I was doing, I was baffled. Who am I? How are you doing? I think I see grief today becoming an atomized experience, becoming competitive. Oh, you loved your best friend, huh? Well, name three of his albums. He only had the one. I think of the night Carrie called me as the model that I would like public grief to take. A delicate human pyramid. People held me up so I could hold her up. 
And as I did so, she reached down to me from her position as the capstone, freeing me to reach down to the ones holding me, locking us all in place, unified as a monumental formation of everybody that knew him. And uh, the cover, I don't, I got a lot of sad shit on my mind these days, but, uh, But uh, so the cover poem is appropriately uh, by Mary Carr. This is Suicide's Note, an annual. Uh, the obvious trigger warnings. I hope you've been taken up by Jesus, though so many decades have passed, so far apart we've grown between love transmogrifying into hate and those sad letters and phone calls in your face vanishing into a noose that I couldn't today name the gods you at the end worshipped, if any, praise being impossible for the devoutly miserable. And screw my church, who'd roast in hell poor suffering bastards like you, unable to bear the masks of their own faces, with words you sought to shape a world alternate to the one that dared inscribe itself so ruthlessly across your eyes, for you could not could never fully refute the actual or justify the sad heft of your body, earn your rightful space, or pay for the parcels of oxygen you inherited. More than once you asked that I breathe into your lungs like the soprano in the opera I loved so my ghost might inhabit you and you ingest my belief in your otherwise only probable soul. I wonder, does your death feel like failure to everybody who ever loved you? As if our collective CPR stopped too soon, the defib paddles lost charge, the corpse punished us by never sitting up. And forgive my conviction that every suicide's an asshole. There is a good reason I am not God, for I would cruelly smite the self spin. I just wanted to say, ha ha, Despite your best efforts, you are every second alive in a hard gnawing way for all who breathe you deeply in. Each set of lungs, those rosy implanted wings, pink balloons, we sigh you out into air and watch you rise like rain. Uh, for those who don't know, she wrote that about her. Um, estranged ex-husband David Foster Wallace, who uh, killed himself in 2007. Uh, uh, the Tumble Words Project is off for Easter. Uh, we got a rabbit to catch, but we will be back in April, and we're real excited about the lineup we have for April, starting with Michael Sindler, who you already saw tonight, uh, started and on April 6th, then April 13th, we'll have uh, Liz Liano, uh, one of our favorites from Las Cruces. Uh, wonderful to see her in action hosting at Las Cruces BWAMS on Thursday. Uh, April 20th, we'll have, speaking of hosts, we'll have Richie Marufo in-house to lead a session. And then April 27th, as she mentioned, Robin Schofield uh, will close out National Poetry Month in the month of April for us with Metaphors Be With You. Hey, hey, get it? Get it? You get it. You get it. Uh, my Instagram kit went away. Uh, I'm on Blue Sky at the same handle. We're get we're ditching that other thing. Uh, you can find me on Facebook easy enough. How many kit runs have you met in the world? Um, and I believe and I will be hosting our live event at Old Chief Dog Brewery this Thursday. It's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. And I think that's all the plugs. I think you got it all. You covered it, Kit. Thank you, as always. Appreciate it, man. And uh, I'm looking forward to Thursday. Hold on. we got to figure that out. There you go. Old Sheepdog Brewery. If you're ever in South Central El Paso, hit them up. Love the family. Uh, one of several breweries that we work with. Um, next month, we'll be at Crafter Them and Brews again. They also do really cool stuff as well. Really enjoyed them. Um, so... Uh, what do I want to say? Uh, next up, we have a returning performer uh, who's in Las Cruces. So it's always great when someone does return. 
Um, again, if you have a chance, this Thursday is a spoken word night. Um, I'm going to get that info for you uh, while you're performing. But let's go ahead and welcome back to the show, Just Joe. What's up, man? Welcome back. Go and take it away when you are ready. Howdy. Hey. Uh, yeah, I'll just, I'm going to read two things because they're uh, just slightly longer. Uh, with the women's poetry thing, um, uh, I'm going to kind of uh, throw a little love back at Cassie McCoy with, uh, she said her thing was, uh, her, her workshop was Invitation to Curiosity. So this is a poem by Liza, Lizzie B., my girl, Elizabeth Bishop, uh, called Invitation to Miss Marianne Moore, uh, which is just fun to read. Um, uh, this is a, Marianne Moore is a poet. And so this is a this is an invitation from a poet to a poet. And and there's just a lot of come and be curious kind of uh, sense in this poem. It's really fun. Um, from Brooklyn over the Brooklyn Bridge on this fine morning. Please come flying in a cloud of fiery pale chemicals. Please come flying to the rapid rolling of thousands of small blue drums descending out of the mackerel sky over the glittering grandstand of harbor water. Please come flying. Whistles, pennants and smoke are blowing. The ships are signaling cordially with multitudes of flags rising and falling like birds all over the harbor. Enter two rivers gracefully bearing countless little pellucid jellies in cut glass aproniers, dragging with silver chains. The flight is safe. The weather is all arranged. The waves are running in verses. This fine morning, please come flying. Come with a pointed toe of each black shoe, trailing a sapphire highlight with a black cape full of butter butterfly wings and bon mot with heaven knows how many angels riding on the broad black brim of your hat, please come flying. Bearing a musical inaudible abacus and a sli slight <clears throat> censorious frown. And blue ribbons, please come flying. Facts and skyscrapers glint in the tide. Manhattan is awash with morals this fine morning. So please come flying. Mounting the sky with natural heroism, above the accidents, above the malignant movies, taxi cabs and injustices at large, while horns are resounding in your beautiful ears that simultaneously listen to a soft, uninvented music fit for the musk deer, please come flying. For whom the grim museums will behave, like courteous male bowerbirds, for whom the agreeable lions lie in wait on the steps of the public library, eager to rise and follow through the doors up into the reading rooms. Please come flying. We, we can sit down and weep. We can go shopping or play at a game of constantly being wrong with a priceless set of vocabularies or we can bravely deplore. But please, please come flying with dynasties of negative constructions darkening and dying around you, with grammar that suddenly turns and shines like flocks of sandpipers flying. Please come flying. Come like a light in the white mackerel sky. Come like a daytime comet with long, unnebulous trains of words from Brooklyn over the Brooklyn Bridge on this fine morning. Please come flying. That's uh, that's my girl Lizzie B. She's got some stuff to say. I like her. Um, uh, and 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 uh, I'm gonna read a, 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 a very small anecdotal story. Uh, this is a poem. About, this poem. It's a short. It's a short little uh, anecdote about my dad. And we call, it's kind of tentatively called the poo poo story. And uh, it's one from when I was a kid and stuff like that. So I like to tell stories about your parents and stuff. So uh, our dad was an optimist. I, actually, I should say our dad was the optimist. If you look up the Albuquerque Evening Optimist Club in 1977, you'll see that my dad was president of the club that year. And you'll also see that the Albuquerque Evening Optimist Club was the number one club in all of Optimist International in 1977. So our dad was literally the number one optimist in the world in 1977. I was nine. My brother, Max, was seven. Now, when you're young, you might not really understand what the word optimist means. Let me tell you some ways you could know. If a great place to store the business inventory is at your house, 
your dad might be an optimist. If the first day of summer vacation happens to be the perfect day to paint the fence, your dad might be an optimist. If your dad turns off the air conditioner on a drive across Oklahoma and takes the back roads because he wants to show you the way they used to drive it, your dad might be an optimist. So one day, Max and I are heading out the park to go play soccer. We've got our shorts on. We've got a ball. We head outside and stop dead in amazement. Parked in front of our house is a black, full-size, Kenworth tractor trailer, big rig, diesel-powered, semi-truck, 18-wheeler. Max and I have seen these on TV. Oh, yes, we have. And they're cool. But they're, but they're even cooler up close. We went all around the truck. We're marveling at its size and shape and coolness. And I looked at Max, do you realize with this, with, we have a cool truck in front of our house that, that makes us cool. We were now ready to race to the park, to, to, uh, to race to the park to meet our friends and play soccer while telling them all about the cool truck in front of our house. We would be the coolest kids at the park. Max had just picked up the ball. We were just heading down the sidewalk when dad came around the side of the house. Did you boys get a load of that truck? Yeah, dad, that is so cool. Here's where I made the mistake. Hey, Dad, can we ride in it? <laughs> ride in it? I've got an even better idea. Max and I looked at each other in horror. Oh, no, 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 Dad has a great idea. We know what this means. Hey, kids, let me show you what I got in the back of that truck. He opened the lever and swung the door to reveal no less than 200 tires. Now remember, Max and I are standing there in soccer shorts, holding a soccer ball. Dad's an optimist. He sees past the obvious. Here's my idea. You boys can unload these tires, put them in the shed. And dad had a shed he put in the backyard, which was just big enough to stack 200 tires. I'm not making this up. You can ask my brother, Max. He made great use of the shed later on uh, as the setting for some of his own stories. <laughs> now, you, now, you might be thinking, probably dad had some help from the business to unload 200 tires and stack them. We'd just be helping with some of the tires. But see, that, that, that would not be a truly optimistic idea. Dad's an optimist. You boys can handle it. And Max and I shrugged. Some of Dad's optimism had rubbed off on us. Tires are cool. The truck is cool. We get to roll the tires into the backyard. Rolling tires is cool. And Dad was proud of his kids and his awesome truck full of tires. When he realized something, huh? Max and I stared in wonder. But the tires, they're not in order. I've got an even better idea. Why don't you boys take them out and sort them by size and then stack them in the shed, biggest to smallest. Here, here's where Max and I were definitely not as optimistic as dad. Max piped up, but dad, we've got a soccer game. We can't be late. Max was a quick draw with excuses, but today is a little too quick. Dad replied, hey, 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 boys, 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 don't, don't. Poo-poo, my idea. Poo-poo? I looked at Max. Did, did we poo-poo the idea? Max and I had a different picture. What that would look like if we would poo-poo the idea. And I had to confess. Dad, 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 you caught us. We heard about your idea ahead of time. And I said, we've got to, we've got to thumbs down that idea. Max said, thumbs down, not good enough. We've got to poo-poo that idea. And I tried to talk him out of it. I said, Max, dad knows everything there is to know about poo-poo. Dad can smell poo-poo a mile away. You cannot fool dad with poo-poo. But then you came around the corner. And we panicked. We went completely into poo-poo mode. Ah, so <laughs> the final category is if your dad accuses you of poo-pooing something that he thinks is a great idea, your dad might be an optimist and you have my condolences. <laughs> That's a great ending. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate you, man. And um, this just heads up for those of you watching. If you're in the Las Cruces area, this Thursday is going to be spoken word night um, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. at Royal Road Cannabis Company. So that's going to be hosted by our, our crew in Las Cruces. Um, if you want to see more posts, um, also if you're watching, what's up? Uh, we got some cool peeps running that. Uh, you can just follow on Instagram, Las Cruces, B-W-O-M-S. So, yeah, we got uh, more shows on the way. Um, again, this Thursday, we're going to be in El Paso. Uh, those of us in El Paso, um, come say hi to Fernando, who will be there for a little bit as well, who's been really, really busy because 
they have a job on the morning radio show now, which is really great, but sad for us because we do late nights, late nights and early mornings do not mesh well. Also, I know this as a teacher, <laughs> but um, that's why I'm tired all the time, people. Anyway, uh, thank you, Joe. Appreciate you. Thanks for coming through. Hopefully you get to check out either one of the shows on Thursday. If you want to know more info, I can send that to you. I can I can also just message you that details right now. Um, all right. Yeah, so I, we're want gonna the, go- I want the details on the on the the uh, Las Cruces thing. Um, I want to throw a pitch in chat just for the Jimmy Santiago Baca conference. He sent it out to me uh, June cool. 28th and 30th in Albuquerque. I've been once and it's, he's a character. So. Oh, he is. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, the mentor of my mentor slash mentor friend. Uh, lots of stories. That guy is wild for sure. <laughs> he's had a wild past. He's got a lot of stuff anyway. um, Yeah. Um, be on the lookout for the chat. Those of you that are there. Um, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to go from Las Cruces to New Jersey. I'm telling you, this online mic is wild. We're jumping all over the country. We're crossing borders just like that. So, yeah, we're going to go to the East Coast once again to New Jersey, where we have another person we have not seen in some while. That's right. It's time to welcome the Chameleon Poetic. When you are ready, go and take it away. Happy Monday. Hi. Um, how is everybody doing? Um, you can find me on Facebook on Terry Rose Jertson or Teresa Rose Jertson or um, the Chameleon Poetic on Instagram. So I have this this whole set I'm gonna read is um, is a promotion for uh, Trisha's workshops that she does um, Saturday morning, I think is when I did this. And it's just, I got so much out of it the last Saturday, so it was really good, so I'm just gonna go. So this was prompts, word, one word prompts, safe. I still have that safe in the hallway, which is locked. And I don't remember the combo. Nothing in it, thankfully. I don't have any valuables that would fit inside. Intent. I always wonder what the intent is behind every request request made of me. It is my intention to escape from this place intentionally. Buried. Buried in my backyard is my dead bird, a cockatiel. That was the only pet of my ex-baby daddy. He seemed to like that bird better than me, which is why it died when he left. I guess the feeling was mutual. Revealed. Not much is revealed to me by God, but I think that's because he or she could not or would not like what I would do with the information should I receive it. Making my own plans, I would change the course of history, and we all know that it just has to keep repeating itself. Truth. Ah, yes, the search for it, never finding it, because my truth will always be different from yours. So I search my search continues until I die because I will never stop searching for the truth. Knowing, this is knowing a little about yourself. I don't like writing about myself because I feel like I said it all and I said all I have to say. My family, they don't really know me and nor do they care to understand any of my idiosyncrasies. My husband is the same. The people close to me know nothing about me except how we are related. Does anyone know my favorite color, scent, food, movie, song, actor, actress, favorite season, favorite fashion designer, president, first lady, favorite vacation spot, hobby? Turn the page again, sorry. My husband would say I spend too much time writing poetry and he would prefer I'd be in the bedroom on my back or front, laying naked for him to poke me with his manhood. His words, you spend too much time writing poetry and on open mics and I wanna know when we can go make love. It's been a long time and in the meanwhile, I've been pleasuring myself just waiting for you to give me the signal. I am like the moon, solitary, spinning around the earth, alone, luminescent, glowing up, brightening up the night sky. When I like to show up, I am beautiful. 
like the roundness, fullness of it. My home is the limitless space filled with stars who are my brightly shining poet community. And this po and this um, prompt is, is switching a life with someone. Terry Almighty, I would not ask to do this switch places with God because as in the movie, I would not know what to do with all that power and probably start out by using it for my own pleasure, like going back to all the people who ever hurt me and making them pay for what they have done. Starting with that nun who beat me on the altar of the church and finishing up with the last man that abused me. Oh, and the state of New Jersey for taxing me to death and senten sentencing me to a crime I didn't commit. My sister-in-law, who died and did not let her brother say goodbye, and who was a total bitch to me when she was alive. The guy who crashed into me with his no license or insurance, giving me a concussion, the results I'm still dealing with. And then I have a couple of haikus. This is about happiness, a pursuit of happiness. If I was happy, you would be able to tell. My face would show it. If I was happy, I would not try to escape joyride in my car. Cruise ship vacation, you would think I'd be happy planning my escape. And then I'm for a cover, I have uh, Mary Oliver from Dog Songs. I had a dog who loved flowers. Briskly, she went through the fields, yet paused for the honeysuckle or the rose, her dark head and her wet nose, touching the face of everyone with its petals of silk, with its fragrance rising into the air where the bees, their bodies heavy with pollen, hovered and easily she adored every blossom, not in the serious careful way that we choose, this blossom or that blossom, the way we praise or don't praise, the way we love or don't love, but the way we long to be, that happy in the heaven of earth, that wild, that loving. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Terry. It's been so long. Um, how can people follow you online who are like seeing you for the first time? Well, I, I kind of took care of that in the beginning, but I'll say it again. So yeah, on um on Facebook, Terry Rose Jertson, Teresa Rose Jertson, or on um on Instagram, the Chameleon Poetic. I dig it. The Chameleon Poetic. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming through. As always, uh, it's always cool when you drop in. Um, all right. So we have a couple more performers left, guys. We're actually gonna stick around the East Coast and Check in with our friend in Washington, D.C., who is definitely going to come with the rhymes. That's right. You know, it's Mr. Ed. Oh, fantastic. Coming with the jokes and the poems. And if you know him, you already know what's up. What's up, man? Go and take it when you're ready. What's up, my bro? Like the other words, like thunder. Sorry about my camera. It's going up and down all around. Ugh. But anyway, um, let's. Fun is on the way. My name is Ed Potastic. Hope you're fantastic. Please get in time. You can join my rhyme. Bob will sublime. I got jokes, so I hope I won't waste any of your time. This is Easter for Easter, so I hope everyone is excited for some cracks <laughs> or some hard-boiled jokes. Hoping I'm not going to make you too scrambled. <laughs> okay. Um, the first joke is, what do you call an unconventional Easter egg? Egg centric. What sport are eggs the best at? Running. <laughs> Did you hear about the most beautiful decorative eggs? There they were to die for. <laughs> Why was the Easter bunny hired for the job? He had the most egg experience. How does an Easter ch um, Easter chick bake a cake? From scratch. <laughs> what do you call a dancing chick? Poultry in motion. 
Why are Easter bunnies more tired when Easter's in April? Because they've just finished a long march. <laughs> Last but not least, where's the best place to learn about eggs? The Hen Psychopedia. <laughs> oh, thank you. Hope everyone loved those joke for your folks. <laughs> All right. Um, I got two short poems and three not too long poems. So I won't take too much time for my rhyme. Thank you for offering me some time. Thank you for making me so, feel sublime. Um, <laughs> the first poem is from our wonderful, stupendous, and talented Michael Sindler's workshop. It was um, it was it was sponsored by our wonderful. Vocabulary. It was a very, very, very wonderful decadive um, poetry. I mean, poetry workshop about food. It was say menu feet, if I say so myself. But this is and one of the prop is uh, write anything, write something about what's for dinner. And I wrote this. Oh my dinner! I don't want to get skinnier. Pizza. I had it yesterday. Too bad leftovers don't stay. Steak. Yes. But I'm not in the mood. No holy cow. I don't want to be rude. Chicken. I prepared it in all forms. Sorry, ancestors. Please don't storm. A salad? No. But maybe on the side. Nobody wants a grumpy hide. Turkey? Yeah, that's something. Maybe it's thighs, drumsticks, or wings. Spaghetti? That was two nights ago. If I eat it over and over, I'm going to explode. Super stew? E it's too hot. I don't know what I did with the pot. Chinese, I had it for lunch. It's kind of gave my stomach a punch. What should I eat? A coupon. Thank you so much, Groupon. Thank you. Um, this was this other poem, this short poem about my friend. He um left so very soon, and this is an Amish poem from me to him. This is called Silent Whispers. Life isn't the same. You were the flame. Events took you away. There goes the days. You're buried right under, while we cry like thunder. You have a unique heart that shine like quality art. I know you are here and there. I know you still share with care. Sometime I wish it was me. I know you'll whack away the misery. Your tombstone still stands, the legend that grazed the land. I dream of you every night to remember your sight. Nothing can bring you back, but you will never fade to black. I remember you as you are, the bright thing close to a star. I'm glad you're taking a peaceful rest inside the ground and my chest. Thank you. All right, two more poems to go. This is called um, A Day in Paris. Homes reach the stars, the skies below, the land of Mona Lisa and artistic affairs. Ah, Paris, a beautiful and happy show. The city soothes away all your cares. Woke up, bathing in the flickering lights, under a radiant and warm sun, listening to an accordion, feels so right. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. I need to run. I shred my stinky nightly layers, going to dip in Lake Inessie's embrace, covered by sweet misty flavors. Ah, a shower, a nice sparkly embrace. Got new layers, now I can go. Oh, my stomach, uproaring fellows. I need something so it won't explode. Usually it's a mute and silent fellow. Do you sniff that wonderful smell? It has a buttery, elegant aroma. I know it, ringing louder than any bell. It's putting me into a food coma. A French baguette taunting me. I smell it at the local bakery, letting my five senses free to a wonderful breakfast tapestry. Right next door, quickly, quicker than a hawk, feeling the buddy crunch in my mouth. Adieu, my hungry, gumpy, stumpy rock. So long to hunger pains and frog mouth. Oh my, the time. I'm super late. 
I'm late for the colorful art. Hope they'll give me a clean slate. I'm an art critic, not too sweet or too tart. I'm here, a display of artistic talent, new and historical masterpieces. It's a huge, magnificent golly scent. The same menu feek of colorful ideas. Before I knew it, I'm done. Off to Paris vast concrete tower. The height makes you happy, but stun while you marvel at Paris's gigantic powers. I'm a tiny bug seeing the flashing lights up on high. Feels like I can touch the sky. The dancing lights, a magnificent sight, watching the fireflies waving goodbye. Gotten home, pop some ancient brew, red wine, drink into a toast. No matter if I'm black, red, or blue, Paris's loom is a fair, the love I desire the most. Thank you. I got my last one. This is called um, Umbrella Persona. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Here it is. I'm sorry about that. Uh, <clears throat> I got you covered from the roaming pains. I got you covered for the chilling rain. I got you covered from nails in the brain. I got you covered for the annoying migraines. I got you covered from the suffer king chains. I got you covered for the nightmarish strains. I got you covered from the untimely trains. I got you covered from the gigantic banes. I got you covered from the lonely dinners of chow mein. I got you covered from the permanent messy stains. I got you covered from the painful tear stains. I got you covered from the crazy bird brains. I got you covered for the pale domains. I got you covered from the careless aims. I got you covered from the just blames. I got you covered for the muddy frames. I got you covered for the blazing flames. I got you covered for the mocking shame. I got you covered for the ridiculous names. I got you covered for the hurtful nicknames. I got you covered from the from the solo games. I got you covered from the boring ball games. I got you covered from the floods of lames. I got you covered from the forgettable surnames. I got you covered. Your life isn't down the drain. So please stay sane. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about my camera. <sighs> I thought that was just a part of the show too, you know, a little, a little viewer uh, perspective. Uh, how can people follow and support you online, Ed? Oh, you can support, you can follow me and support me online. While come this wonderful open mic that makes our money life such light in the wonderful protestic spotlight. All right, if you want to follow me, please feel free. My face was Eddie Furman, and my IG is Eddie from ninety two. And remember, if the mic is right, I'll be there to shine my shine my protestic insight. If you send me a quest, if you take guests, the answer is yes. Hope everyone, stay, hope everyone stay safe, healthy, and blessed. Never stop speeding the Warren's words on the child of your chest. Never stop being and doing your best. And remember, you are more important than you ever know. Don't stop the glow and don't stop your flow. If you don't know, now you know. I love this show! <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. Appreciate you, man. Uh, thanks for coming through. As always, uh, I feel like that, that sign-off keeps adding more and more to it, but I love it. Um, awesome. Once again, guys, welcome to our online open mic. Um, I have a couple pieces. So really quick, before I, before I do my, I have three quick pieces. I don't think they'll be too long. But this is my message to Dan. If you're cooking dinner, hurry up because you're after me, okay? I'm not going to, I can't stall because I'm going to perform already. All right. So uh, just make sure you're ready after me. Um, I was requested some pieces and I couldn't remember what I was supposed to read. So uh, these are three pieces tied together through a, a, a loose thread of sky watching, but they're all kind of different uh, perspectives of that, I guess. But the last one being uh, a very, very uh, extreme work in progress was something I wrote at Cassie's workshop last Thursday. No, last Wednesday. Um, so first one, this one's called Heavy Moon. And uh, there's a concept in here, I guess, just, just to kind of explain it. Um, a perigee. Right, perigee is when the moon is closest to Earth. So that's kind of the central image of, of this one. It's called Heavy Moon. <clears throat> Even Orpheus looked back. There are groggy days that sit there, 
loaded with abstractions like time or space. When phrases like I miss you are just words on a screen. Do you ever stop to listen for the music and everyday things like a passing thought or a smile? You know, my heart gets hungry too. Tonight, I couldn't possibly keep up with Neruda or the pull of this heavy moon because it reminds me of you as if I can pull out of the sky this midnight pearl and marvel at the thought of our very own perigee. Pull me in. I'm yours. If you leave a trail of words, I'll follow them back to you. Okay, there's that one. All right, this one's called Every Patient Skywatcher. I don't read this one as much because it's a little longer, but I wrote this one during the pandemic. Inspiration. I've seen you through the clouds, amongst the people and in the crowds. Last night, the stars sang to me, blanketed me in threads of light, in the threads of chaos of eons and eons beyond that space of understanding, standing under, over, in, on, at, around, and within. Call me ever a patient sky watcher. I have learned to assign moments under the stars as a paradigm for understanding. Illuminescent, loom in essence, taught me that inspiration doesn't just live in timelines, holds no expiration dates, but dares to exist like a spark through the darkness, waiting. Shh. If you listen closely, you can hear it. We're talking relevance and retrospect. Hence, our introspective perspectives may come to res grow, uh, be respected as it grows in the infinite minute by minute like lit wick. Tolerance to the entropy of existence has dictated it must be. Mira, manifest this tequila into discarded coffee cups. Yes, the usefulness of a cup is in its emptiness. That is its own kind of magic. It persists, it perseveres, it runs on and on into spray paint, sizzle of midnight mist, flora, ifauna, aloe vera, y la verdad. Moon, magnificent, mystifies, entangles my heart in her moonbeams, greets me like an old friend. You see, there's something to be said about taking moments to stop and reflect, to quiet things down and listen to the slowing down of your very own breath to place your hand on your chest and feel your theme music that steady bass line pumping life force and makes you tick while the night breeze paints the air around you like t -t 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 the moon greets me like an old friend and here i am like you stoy Finger on the pulse of a moment, ear to the rhythm of this mixtape music. Wind and hair, eyes closed, the world takes a breath and I feel the cry. The world is hurting and I'm trying my best and I realize that sometimes my best can still be better. It is a cascade of thoughts swirling into the abyss, stretched and pulled to the sound of be better, be better, be better. Better be 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 the thought mimics the musicality of black holes. It repeats and repeats, it gains steam, grows momentum, claims more land, snakes throughout the cities in my head, synapses sparking, smoking, revealing that we still can't stop progress on a moving train of thought. Like tick, tick. Tick. Bloom. Okay. Cheesy ending, but uh, this is my work in progress. Something you're never supposed to share, right? <laughs> I still got to edit and want to add more to this and edit it a lot more. But this came from Cassie's workshop because I like that post-apocalyptic sci-fi too. Um, there you go. This is the thread that leads into the future. In the vast expanse of this void... I dream of my ancestors who stretched their legs in full sprint along the rolling plains, conquered mountaintops and rested in the shade of giant sequoia. 
In the confines of this metallic hole, I yearn for the sensation of soft soil running through my toes, breathing in the freshness of a recent rainfall in the desert, of the ocean's thundering dance along the shore, and yet, here, I breathe in the hum of this drifting vessel. Inspired machinations maneuvering toward horizons my ancestors, ancestors could only dream about. The cosmic winds rumble in new rhythms, rhythms. I am that dream of my ancestors who looked up to the sky and wept. Cool. So I'll add a little bit more to that. But those are three somewhat thematic poems, Night Sky, Visions, Inspiration, Peace, you know, trying to find our place in the world. All right, cool. So thank you again, Cassie, for that workshop. I look forward to the next one. Um, you guys should check it out if you have a chance. Otherwise, um, I think, oh, also, yeah, follow me in Deadwall Reveries. There you go. That's the Instagram. I went with the space background to go with the poems, too. Anyway. We have one last performer. If you guys have tuned in before, you already know what's up. If you've never been here before, you will. It is time for our closer. That's right. We have a designated closer. Uh, mm -hmm. Without further ado, let's go ahead and bring up the one, the only. That's right. The man with the rhyming dictionary. You know what's going to go down. It's Dan, the man. Okay. Can you still hear? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, let me see if I can make this quick. Well, don't have to be, don't have to be that pick. Well, it's not even because I'm not even sick because I have this, uh, have these uh, new ones right here. It's supposed to be ick. <laughs> well, <clears throat> yeah, even though we there's some sort of an explosion, but you know about the corrosion of so you go to Las Vegas, you see the buildings implosion. Minus erosion. <laughs> yeah. But even though <clears throat> one way to flow and even though but how much snow we all the home. No, I'm sorry, the the bow. <laughs> but even <clears throat> yep, when we say the coast to coast, I see a ghost and oh yeah, I know Richie is always the host with the most and yep, somebody give him a roast. Yep. To cheer, give him a toast. <laughs> and yeah, and yeah, we don't see a ghost like a TV series. Yep, it always the coast to coast. We need the boast. Well, almost. <laughs> Just like um, almost. <laughs> but <clears throat> doesn't pay the cost to be the boss. But as only has it only has defrost. But we don't want to be that double cross and how. Mm -hmm. And doesn't have doesn't have to be the double crossed, but it always had always it's cross. But we don't want to get lost. But it's always our loss. But it's just like it's like at any cost. It's always it's always a cross. So crisscross applesauce. Yeah, the usual. If you know what I mean. All right, just letting you know, again, Dan the Man's Weekly, still on hiatus until further notice. I'm working on I'm catching up. So we'll keep you posted when the updates come available. All right, thank you very much. And I hope to and I hope to hope to be at the old sheet dog brewery this coming Thursday. So we'll keep you posted. All right, Richie, let's go ahead and call it a night. Thank you so much. And the rest of you, I'll see you next Monday. All right, thank you, Dan. Click, as as we like to say here. Um, thank you, everyone who signed up and read today. Thanks for everyone who hung out with us online. Again, if you're an EPCC student and you need uh, that town passport, I did leave the instructions uh, in the live chat. You can go back and check that out. You can also find me on Instagram here, Dead Wall Reveries, or you can message me through the school, through the college. I teach English at EPCC. You can find me. Look up my last name. Send me an email there. Um, otherwise, yeah, that's a lot of different ways you can find me. Catch up with us next week. We'll be back as always every Monday. Um, yeah, we, we'll still be doing it. Uh, the other thing is catch our events this week. Tuesday, we'll be downtown at Rosewood for our poetry and music night called Verse and Harmony. 
Thursday we'll be at Old Sheepdog Brewery. I'm already I'm already rocking the cap. Come have a beer with us, hang out. Kit will be hosting. Fernando will be there for a little bit as well. If you miss Fernando, I do. Um, what else? Oh, yes. Propaganda Poet will be in town. Come meet Propaganda Poet if you've not had a chance. Uh, if you're not familiar with Propaganda Poet, check out our YouTube channel. I uploaded a video of him doing a poetry set in our studio. If you want to record in our studio, hit me up for a recording session. Uh, lastly, there's also a spoken word night in Las Cruces on Thursday. Um, man, so many announcements, right? I didn't give a, I didn't get to give a shout out earlier, but Julian Morales was listening in on YouTube, uh, who often does so. Julian has read here before, um, but also does check out the live shows quite often. So I, I know all the love in the world to Julian. Um, Julian has a really great project called The Art of Storytelling. Definitely encourage you guys to check it out if you are in the El Paso area. Um, I couldn't go to the last show because I had I had a, my own featured set uh, in another part of the city. Uh, it sucks. And then also the next one is on 420, Saturday 420. I can't make that one either because I'm going to be emceeing another show. So that is always the curse of being involved with so many things, right? Uh, but you're going to look out for all the stuff we have going on. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. If you're watching this just sometime during the week, thanks for being here with us. Leave a comment, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff for the online mic and the live stream. 